Uh, I'd like to give over a short uh, story about the puzzle of Hashem's world, how Hashem runs the world in a way that sometimes we don't understand, but we see things and hear things, and only after many years you see the full circle of things. And this is an amazing example in my own family with a, uh, a f with my sister's family that starts off with my father's uncle. My father had an uncle, my father Rabbi Horowitz Schlitter, his mother, uh, Mrs. Rosie Rella Horowitz, Zichon Ali who died at the ripe old age of 101. She had several brothers. Um, one brother was called Uncle Edwin Feist Hanoch, that I knew personally, died at the age of 102, lived in Beit Vigan. Another brother was killed in the First World War. In the German army, he served in the German army and he was killed. He was a very famous uh, Aguda youth activist. He was the founder of the Tzirei Agudat Israel in the world. People don't know this. In um, in uh, the years before even the First World War, when he was killed in the French front. Another brother, the oldest brother, was called Rabbi Yeshua Halevi Feist, Philip Feist, that was sent to work in Paris as the representative of the very successful large Frum metal company in Frankfurt, Bär und Sondheimer, one of the largest metal companies in Europe. And he ran the branch in, Fra in Paris and then when the Holocaust came he uh, managed to escape the Nazi part of France to the southern part of France the Vichy uh, part of France and joined forces with the relative of the Lubavitch Rebbe <coughs> I think it was called Reb Zalman or Reb Leib Schneelson who took care of many children Jewish children wandering around France and took them in and tried to make some kind of um, sense with their lives even at some stage even opening some kind of dormitory that was like a bit like a yeshiva resembled a yeshiva they got permission to do so and they gathered many children and uh, this uh, Mr. Philip Feist my father's uncle Uncle Philip Feist was uh, one of the main was people the it. he was one of the main people behind this this initiative and he ran it and he um, one day encounters a child called Yossi with a very very sad story this Yossi actually wanted to take in his life he, hadn't, he says I have no reason to live anymore a family originated from Poland but they happened to be in that area of Europe and his father and brothers were taken to Auschwitz already and killed he was left with his mother and two sisters the mother and two sisters headed down to Marseille thinking from there they can take a boat to England or somewhere else and save themselves but since there was permission for boys up to the age of 15 to join this internat, this dormitory for Jewish boys the mother said maybe you'll be able to learn Torah even after a few years of not learning maybe you can have a normal life a bit so maybe we'll try and uh, look for another refuge but for you this is the good refuge but he was left all alone hungry tired with torn clothes and no shoes and to walk a whole day through the woods to arrive in this place and finally arrived in this village where this thing was this uh, so-called dormitory and he was uh, already almost didn't want to live, he lost hope but when he came into this place he was greeted with such a friendly, warm uh, person uh, our, our great, our, my great uncle, Uncle Philip Feist who after hearing his situation took him in like a father, like a personal child and uh, tucked him into bed gave him food and clothing and and calmed him and soothed his soul and he says we don't worry I'm like your father I'm like your rebel like your mother he learned with him every day and made him feel great 
and he learnt with him and, and brought him back to the right track. And uh, <clears throat> finally what happened to my great uncle Philip is brought in a sefer called Eile Ezkero, a six volume series published by Dr. Isaac Levine from Aguda in America, he was the representative in the UN of Aguda, and he published a book Eile Ezkera, in I think in volume five there's an article dedicated to the personality of this Philip Feist, I'm talking of Rabbi Shua Levi Feist, who was an unbelievable example of an amazing Yerushalayim and Tzaddik and Tom Trochen, who was a businessman. What happened was, at the end, these children were somehow... Because they, uh, they didn't have passports, many of them, French. and they had to run away. They were going to run away to, to Switzerland. By the way, where the family of Philip Feist, Philip Feist's own uh, family, were, were also be beyond the border in Switzerland, and he was on the train uh, with a group of boys. And but the what happened was, it was the last train out of the Nazi the France place. for these boys. Uh, otherwise, they would be taken to be killed. And he went with them, and uh, on the way, and he's, sitting in the he's sitting in the train, and on the way, one boy had to go out on one of the ways. On the, no, the, 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 the last train load, he was allowed to send about five or eight train loads of boys. Five and eight, or eight train loads of boys, and, and he was the on the last train one. Load, he's sitting, in, he's the sitting in the train, and someone his knocks wife, on the window. His wife is an hour and a half. An hour and a half away in Switzerland, and someone yeah. knocks on the window and, and says, says they a, kept, they've kept one boy. They, they, in, 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 they I don't know. Some they stopped one of in the barrier. The Nazi officers that he says he can't be going with. Is, this boy is too tall. Is, is, they thought he's old. He can't be 15, and he has no permission. And Philip Weiss went out of the train to try and save this child, and they took him to Auschwitz, and that's how he was killed with the Meiser Chesed, with his Mesil Snepesh for every Jewish child. With this in mind, that's how and he was taken to Auschwitz. Survived. And actually the boy, he tried to save, he survived. And he was living in Baik Vidan until several years ago. Anyway, to cut a long story short, this Yossi, the boy in this dormitory, that spiritually and mentally and almost physically, his life was saved by our Uncle Philip. He himself managed to get out of, of uh, after the Holocaust, he came to England and settled in Manchester. And uh, he was part, in the, part of the Froome community in Manchester, in Broughton Park, what we call Salford 7. And there was a minion where my father, when, he, when we were living in Manchester, used to daven there sometimes. The minion of Dain Weiss, the Michas Yitzchok, the God Lador, Gdol Poske Adol. And that his minion was called later Old Tory, was called then the Fulda's minion, because uh, Mr. Fulda that had the hotel, he had the minion there. And he was the Gabba, this Yossi, his name was Yossi Wolf, he was the Gabba of this minion. And uh, he knew my father many years in Manchester. And let's skip now almost 45 years later. And my sister um, and the husband, Rabbi Menachem Goldstein, uh, their daughter Tamar, got married to a wonderful big town with Chochem, Rabbi Moshe Wolf from the Mir Yeshiva. And my father and mother come to the Shabbat Brochus, and my father's sitting at the Shabbat Brochus and sees an elderly gentleman, the grandfather of Chosen, sitting next to him. And straight away they find out they know each other from many decades back in Manchester. And then this Rabbi Yosef Wolf says to my father, he says, I never told you, Rabbi Horowitz, I should tell you the truth. I know you for many years. I never told you my real life story. I'll tell you the truth. Baruch Hashem, I have big nachas today. Children and grandchildren, great grandchildren, ala Torah, ala Avoido. Baruch Hashem, I thank Hashem every minute. But my life, as we all, you know, went through the Holocaust. It, at one stage, I didn't want to live anymore. At Kedek to thank Hashem. And he says, and my father says, no, what happened? Why did he want to? Okay, but you were saved. He says, no, no. And he tells my father the whole story. How this gentleman, saved his life. What's the name of this gentleman? Philip Feist. My father says, that is my mother's brother, Hashem Yimkim Domoy. And they both started crying from emotion, but it shows you how Hashem runs the world and how the full circle comes back 
And Baruch Hashem today, we're all living, and uh, Baruch Hashem managed to survive uh, all the trials and tribulations that we went, that they went through in their lifetimes. And Baruch Hashem, the family is united. And obviously, Bashamayim, also Philip Feist, Hashem and now Rabbi Yosef Wolf, Zichron El Brocha, was Nifta recently, together in Shomayim, they're rejoicing to see that the children and grandchildren are all Baruch Hashem, healthy and learning Torah and serving Hashem uh, with Nachas and Simcha. Thank you. Thank you so much, man.